yourself. So when you go to Google and say brain training, this is what you So what are the claims? Well, we can tell from this just this front page of their website that they are claiming to be science. Challenge your brain with scientifically designed training. Uh, we see an image of the brain using some specific indicators. At the bottom, we see a leader in science, the science of brain training. So clearly, Lumosity is uh, offering brain training as a scientific, not a pseudo-scientific venture. Uh, the issue here is going to be, what are we going to use this brain training for, and does that data hold up to being scientific, or is it a false claim? So we'll burrow down a little bit into their website to start to get a, to get a sense of what is it that they're promising. What are the claims? Uh, the first level down as I start to build my personalized training program is would I like to improve my memory? So they're claiming that I can improve my recall of object location. I can remember names better after being introduced just once. I can learn new subjects quickly and accurately and I can keep track of several ideas at the same time if I use their training. Now, recalling the location of objects and remembering names after the first introduction, those are pretty small skills. Those are pretty prescribed skills. Uh, I could practice or develop a strategy for either of those and probably get better at it. So I'm not so sure that they won't be able to demonstrate that, but the skeptic in me uh, is really looking at learning new subjects quickly and accurately. That's a really broad skill. That's much more complex than remembering a name the first time. So we're pushing up against perhaps one of those pseudoscientific warnings uh, that uh, warning signs and, and I want you to think about what that might be uh, because part of your Thursday assignment is going to be to analyze all these things I've shown you and tell me how do you think uh, they may have pushed these uh, issues uh, of pseudoscience. All right, so let's see what else they think I can do. If I want to practice attention, if I want to develop my attention, I can maintain focus on important tasks all day. I can improve productivity and pre uh, precision at work and at home. I can concentrate while learning something new and I can avoid distractions. Well, some of those are pretty narrow skills, avoiding distractions, maintaining focus, uh, concentrating while learning something new. Uh, but improving productivity and precision at work and home, that's a big claim again. That's a broad set of skills. That's not some little thing. So my skeptic light comes on. So far, we've looked at two of the things they say they can do. They've made four claims under each of them, and I've found at least one of those four claims to be sort of incredible and maybe three of them to be sort of credible. Uh, I can work on the speed at which I do things. I can improve the decision making in time sensitive situations. I can speed up cognitive processes. I can adapt to changing environments and I can react more quickly. Um, well, out of these four, I, I'm kind of skeptical that I can uh, adapt to changing environments. That's, that's a pretty broad area, how can they be sure that I will do that, and that I'll be more uh, decisive in time-sensitive situations. I'm not sure about that one either. Uh, learning to uh, speed up my thinking might be plausible and reacting more quickly might be plausible, whether it's through their training or some other modality, I don't know yet. So far, I'm pretty skeptical. Uh, their next claim says that uh, I can improve my flexibility. I can communicate clearly. I can think outside the box. I can avoid errors and I can multitask quickly and efficiently. Well, now I'm getting really skeptical because uh, communications is a complex uh, task, which seems like it might be more than just working on my working memory or my attention. Certainly they couldn't hurt it and they probably would be correlated to it, but I'm not sure that they are uh, they may be necessary. In other words, I'm not sure they're sufficient. Thinking outside the box, another really big skill. So I'm pretty skeptical there. Avoiding errors. Um, well, that's a, an accuracy issue. And let's see, we develop accuracy at that acquisition level by drill. So maybe if I'm drilling on something, I would avoid errors. Question is, will I only avoid errors in what I drilled on or will I avoid errors in general? I don't know yet. And uh, multitasking quickly and efficiently. That one's a real red flag because as a uh, student of psychology, 
I know there's a body of research out there that says we don't truly multitask, uh, that we actually simply slice time up and reassemble it. So the definition of multitasking uh, would become really important here, but the fact that they've given it a really simple label like I can multitask more quickly after doing this uh, is a red flag to me. And finally, uh, kind of top level, I can uh, work on my problem solving. I can dissect complex arguments, make quick and accurate estimations, calculate figures in my head, and determine the best course of action after following their training program. These look to me like they're all broad, high skills that would be uh, what we would call far transfer uh, from uh, the skills that they're training me on on the computer. Uh, I'm going to use terms near transfer and far transfer. Near transfer means if I practice a subskill, if I practice working memory, trying to remember a series of numbers and items that are interspersed and then giving them back to you. For example, uh, one of the Woodcock tests of, of uh, working memory uh, reads a list of items and a list of numbers to you randomly, and then your job is to hold that in your head while you reorganize it and then tell it to them, tell it back to the examiner in a specific way. Uh, that could be, uh, an example of that could be one, coke, uh, three, uh, shoe. And the task is to give the numbers back first and the items back second, but in the order you heard them in. That's a test of working memory. So in response to one, coke, three, shoe, I would say one, three, coke, shoe. And we can test that and we can practice that and maybe we can expand our ability to do that. But uh, the near transfer assessment of that would be to give me a post a pretest on how well I did that before I did lumosity training, to give me a post test on how well I did that after I did lumosity training, and to see if I did it better after lumosity training. And since it, they're asking me to perform the task that I practiced during the training, that's a near transfer task. And I would suspect, given what we know about learning and practice, that in fact I might get better at it. There may be a practical limit to it, and I would suspect based on the psychological research there is a practical limit to it for most of us, but I could probably get better at it. However, to say that practicing that task and being able to say one, three, coke, shoe was going to make me more able to make quick, accurate decisions, calculate figures in my head, uh, dissect complex articles, and all of the other far transfer tasks, the things that are more complex, that are further from what I trained on, uh, is something I remain pretty skeptical about. The foundations for most of this is if you do uh, uh, a regression, uh, if you look at the regressions and correlations of some of these things, uh, some of these higher order tasks, when correlated with some of these lower, later t lower level tasks, do have high correlations meaning that these tasks are important. Uh, what, we, what I'm skeptical about is uh, does improving the subskill actually improve the big skill or does it just improve the subskill? So let's look at the evidence they've given us for these claims uh, that if I follow their training program I can improve in these five areas. The evidence provided by Lumosity includes this page. Uh, this page shows me that over 50 million people in 182 countries, uh, people named Sarah and Dave and Marcus and Carla, who are amazing athletes and talented artists and hardworking parents, have uh, participated in this and uh, are probably better off. So this might fit one of our warning signs and uh, might be something that uh, we've talked about already in this presentation, and you need to think about that. Be prepared to talk about that on Thursday. Uh, what other evidence have they provided me? Uh, I go to the press page where they have an opportunity to tell the world about themselves, and I see that they've provided me with some little snippets. On the right-hand side, I see more than 40 games offered by Lumosity on the in-back uh, is based on a task developed decades ago by psychologists, and that's all I see. So the New York Times wrote an entire article, presumably longer than that one and a half sentence space, and they've extracted from that uh, a piece that talks about the INBAC, which think about what you know about the INBAC and then consider what kind of warning sign that might be, and uh, tells me that it was 
developed by psychologists. Psychologists are scientists, so what kind of a warning might that be? Uh, and, uh, you know, you can go peruse the Lumosity site yourself and look at some of the other evidence here. But uh, this is some of the evidence offered under the press page. So I'm still looking for things more serious, and I look around the page and I find a, a link that says research. Now we're getting into the neighborhood of what a, a psychologist wants to see. Go to their research page, and they make a number of claims on their research page. Uh, this is where my early admonition that we have to evaluate the claim against the evidence comes in. They talk about claims for uh, helping elderly people maintain cognition. They talk about claims for implementing in school. There are different areas. I'm only looking at a, their two examples for things that are implemented in schools. I'm a school psychologist. Uh, I'm an, uh, interested in learning. I'm interested in education. Uh, I'm going to select those two kinds of claims instead of all of their claims and evaluate them. So their first claim is research from Lumos Labs. We have to consider who produced this research and is it likely to be peer reviewed. And uh, the uh, title is Taking Lumino Lumosity to Classrooms Worldwide. There's a link here. You should click on that link, go visit it, uh, look at that poster. When you look at that poster, they tell you that they are assessing uh, two questions. Uh, the first question is, can I uh, distribute cognitive training uh, on a large scale to classrooms all over the world? And the second question is, will students who participate in cognitive training distributed through this model uh, perform better? Uh, specifically, will they perform better on test of neuro or neuropsychological measures, which is um, that near field measure, that near transfer measure. So uh, they provide me with one article, and basically it says, yes, I can indeed uh, deliver this over a broad number of sites at one time, and yes, students who engage in it uh, do better on the task that they trained on, and yes, the more they train on it, the better they do. That's all pretty straightforward, and it's pretty much what I would expect. What it fails to tell me is, does it support any of those other claims for far transfer task? You be the judge. Now, additional evidence uh, is always welcome. We look for a convergence of evidence for multiple things coming together to tell us something about the strength or the probability that we're seeing something that's real. So Lumosity also produced a second article, a study of Lumosity in the classroom setting. Uh, this article is displayed on the same page as the other one. It would offer converging evidence were it a second article conducted particularly by a different group of people with a different group of participants and found the same outcome. That's called replication. And when we have replication, we have a convergence of evidence that says this may be in fact true. However, when you look at this article, you click on that link, you go look at the article, uh, it asks exactly the same questions. It's from the same publisher. It's mostly the same researchers and it arrives at the same three conclusions. It says that, yes, you can distribute it. Yes, they do better on the tests they trained on. Yes, the more they train on that task, the better they do. Um, so this isn't really converging evidence, and that might fall into uh, one of those warning signs as well. So where else could I look? What else could I do to try to determine whether this is science or pseudoscience? Well. I could look at external claims. 